What's up everybody? I'm sure you guys are still in shock that I'm actually starting to work on the C10 again. So the plans for this weekend, I'm going to close off these HVAC holes. I'm going to remove this dashboard that will give me access to the under cowl side. So there's going to be a lot of cutting, grinding, welding, fitting. I think it's time to start working on this. Okay, so the way you deal with getting this dashboard out, there is, I believe, three bolts that hold this thing in place in there. So you got to remove those. And then, uh, you know, lucky enough for us, they decided to weld the dashboard to the window channel. So you're going to have to go through all these spot welds. You're going to have to cut them all out to remove this piece. Now, why would I actually go through the trouble of doing that? Well, a couple reasons. First of all, I want to get access to that because I want to completely get this thing painted. Also, there's going to be some rust repair, I know for a fact, in these areas. And I'm going to be doing some modifications to this piece. I'm actually going to extend this piece out to here and put in a nice touch screen. So yeah, that is my reason for taking it out. You don't have to do it, but I think it's just going to be easier to do what I need to do with this piece out. If you guys want to see a more detailed video on how to remove this dashboard out of a 67 through 72 Chevy C10 truck, click that link right there. But for now, let's get this thing out. And by movie magic, it is out. It wasn't too bad. I ran into, you know, a couple issues. There's a couple overlapping pieces here, and this is actually really hard because you got to drill through this piece and drill through this piece, and it's kind of hard to tell where some of the spot welds are. Uh, not a big deal. I'll just do a little patch panel here. I'm glad I tore into this because there's some rot. I mean, it's surface, not a big deal. But this whole area with the seam sealer, I know that there's some rot there because if you look on this side, you can see the panel starting to split. So that rust is just kind of building up in there and starting to push these two panels apart. But yeah, so that is done. I will at some point tonight start grinding all this down, start removing the seam sealer. But for now, let's tackle that. The reason why I'm going to close off these holes is because I'm not going to put the factory big old bulky box back on here. I'm going to go with a vintage air system that mounts on the inside. So really the only thing I need in this area is two holes a little bit bigger than this, somewhere in this area, which I will cut eventually, but for now, I need to weld this up. So, how do we go about doing that? Well, if you really want to be lazy about it, you can cut out a panel, put it flush against here, and then kind of butt weld it around. Both of these, slap some filler on there, and you're done. What I'm going to do because I'm not really sure on how this vintage air system is going to mount on the backside, but I'm going to cut a whole section and put a whole new piece in there. I want to have seamless repairs. And if I just weld this in, let me show you the backside of this. There's going to be no way for me to kind of clean this area up. There's just going to be weld everywhere. You know, nobody's going to see this, but it's just taking that extra step to kind of do it the right way. If you guys want to follow the build, because I'm going to be putting a lot of time into this truck this year, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell. That way you're notified when new videos are uploaded. All right, so if I had to pick one of these, oh, I'm definitely going with this one. No, but I mean, in theory, if this is all you had, you could, you, you could make it work. I mean, it's not going to be fun. Now going one step up, if you have an angle grinder, you could actually put one of these cutoff wheels and you could go that route. If you only have a drill, they actually sell, so mind you, this is for a Dremel, but they make a bigger sized version of this that mounts to a drill that will receive these discs. So for the longest time before I had, you know, some of these tools, that was my to go to. I mean, I probably built my Chevelle with mainly these two tools and a really bad stick welder. If you have an air compressor, that gives you a lot more flexibility on what kind of tool you can use. This is a nibbler. This is actually a really good tool, but I, I got this thing at Harbor Freight a long time ago. This thing could not cut a straight line if its life depended on it. You have this little Mac cutoff wheel. This thing works really well. Uh, then you have the reciprocating saw, also called a saber saw. Those work really well. You can really get into, you know, tight spaces. For instance, if you needed to cut through here, just... And you have your good old-fashioned cutoff wheel. Now... I know I knocked Harbor Freight there, but I will give you this much. I bought this thing on sale at Harbor Freight for $7. I have been using this for over 10 years. It is my to-go-to -to cutoff wheel. Sometimes you look out and get a gem like this. And if you guys are interested in any of these tools, there will be a link in the description for most of them. All right, so I'm going to start by kind of marking roughly where I'm going to make these cuts. Or I'm going to try to round these off as I start cutting. 
So what did we learn, boys and girls? That was the wrong tool for the job. Now, I got it cut a little bit this way, switched over to the Mac, saber saw, it started getting away from me because the blade is very thin and floppy, and I switched over to the IR, and I mean, that thing caught like a dream. But it's done, what do you think? Perfect, right? Custom touch. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to save these cereal boxes because they honestly make the best template material because it's thin, it's very pliable, you can, you know, put really nice bends into it. So what I did is I took a box, I put it against here, I held it down with these Eastwood stitch magnets that are freaking amazing. I've actually held up a camshaft to my cabinets up there uh, with two of these. But uh, there actually will be a link for these in the description, so check that out. These are super handy when you're doing metal work like this. And then I came to this side with my trusty Sharpie, and I traced all the way around. So we got our template made, and now we're going to take this and transfer it onto some sheet metal. All right, so we got all that done. Where in the world do I get sheet metal? If you go to any hardware store, they're going to have 16, and I believe it's 22 gauge. If you need something in between those sizes, you're going to have to go to a welding shop or some kind of supply house that deals with sheet metal or you can order it from companies like Jags. Now here's a piece that I bought a very long time ago. This one came from Jags, and we all know if the order is over $100, there's free shipping. So there's that option. Now the cheapest option for sheet metal would be to go to your local parking lot with a pair of, there's one more option. This is honestly the cheapest option. If you have a truck or car that you're working on and there's panels that you're not gonna keep, borrow the metal from there. I did it for years, I had a, a piece of a door skin from my Chevelle. I use that on all sorts of stuff, you know? So as long as it's not rusty, knock down all the paint off of it and use it. Metal's metal. And this is where this tool shines. The other thing you can do also, rather than using a marker, is you can scribe the metal, which gets you a lot closer well, I would say I'm pretty happy with that. It's fitting pretty well. I'm gonna clean the edge with some acetone and then we're gonna start melting some metal. So I'm plugging along and this panel warped on me a little bit. And now this piece of steel is behind the firewall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my trusty saber saw and I'm just gonna cut from here all the way over. And then I'll just continue tacking this thing in. Hey, I never said I was a good welder, just saying. I haven't welded in probably about a year, and, and it shows. There's definitely going to be some pinholes. All right, so after a long day, this is where we're sitting. I got everything ground down. I still have to grind down the back side of this, and there is obviously a good amount of pinholes that I'm going to have to address. So as far as finishing this weekend, I guess I failed that, but we'll get back to this next weekend. And I'm back. It's Saturday night, about 8.30, and I gotta get something done tonight. So we're pulling an all-nighter and I'm probably gonna get about four hours of sleep. Let's get to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock down all these welds and those are probably gonna uncover a couple more pinholes that I'm gonna have to weld. And there is little areas where the gun got away from me like that. So I will have to weld all this stuff so I have full penetration. But yeah, that is the goal for tonight, to try to clean this up and maybe start working on welding some of these holes up. I knocked down some of these welds and honestly, F minus on these welds, so bad. So yeah, I'm just gonna go through and every little spot you see where there's no weld and I'm gonna fill it with welds. Uh, that's a good way to spend your night, I guess. Don't you love it when your lack of practice Creates way more work for you. It's the next morning, so let me show you what I did last night. I cleaned up all this again. Also, I made these plugs for all the holes that are unnecessary now. So I'm just gonna zap these in, and that will take care of that. And then on the inside, I cleaned up as much as I could, sanded it down with 80 grit. I still have to hit a couple of these areas, but I might replace this piece. I'm not 100% sure yet. At this point, I got all those holes filled. I metal worked the area with my dad. Now, what I'm doing here is I turned off the lights and I'm looking for small pinholes with backlight on the other side. So here's what I found. I found a couple of these, and there's also two that you could only see when the light was on this side looking from the inside out. There's one here, and I believe there's one there, so I'm gonna weld those from the other side because I, I can't even see them here. Then we can slap our all metal or fiberglass filler in there to seal that seam and throw some primer on it. So this area is ready. I also 
welded up those holes. Shooting on over here. I welded up these three insulation holes. I sanded down most of this. What I'm gonna be coating this with is self-etching primer. And as you can tell, the outside is epoxy. I'm just doing this for the time being. Once springtime comes, I'll knock down the primer and I'll repaint it. So I just picked this up a couple weeks ago. I've never actually had a decent sander. So here's my old DA. Nothing special, something I got at Harbor Freight. It worked for a while, but check this out. It's got great RPM. But the second you touch it to the metal, it just completely bogs down. Check this out. So I decided to upgrade. This is probably the nicest sander I've ever had. You get what you pay for. Make sure you clean the metal before any type of filler work or paint. So here's how we're looking with the firewall. I got the spots that I needed to. I got some fiberglass filler on those and on the inside. So the fiberglass filler is sanded. It was super fun. Let me tell you, it took way too long. Next time I'm using 36 grit. Now, in a normal world, I would take out my polyester filler at this point and completely put a skim coat on here and block it out and make it nice and smooth, which I will do, but I'm not going to do it now. For now, I'm just going to prime it and move on to the next project. So the next morning, the paint has dried. I'm pretty happy with it. As far as this side goes, I'm not even going to touch this right now because there is a layer of dust on everything. I will throw some self-etch on here before I wrap up in the garage tonight. But for now, I'm going to finally get going on that cab corner. My goal is to have this piece welded in by the end of the day. So we'll see you in the next video. Later.